Good morning, Mr. Abbott. Good morning, Year 11. Good morning, Post 16. Good morning, everybody. Once again, I'm sat here on my own in my office, but this time I've got Miss Harvey joining me virtually, and we're going to be delivering a joint assembly talking about the tag process, which we've had lots of questions from you about. So I'm going to share my screen, Miss Harvey. Excellent. And what I propose we do, if I explain to the students what the process is going to be, and then you want to talk us through some of the questions we've had in from the students. Absolutely. So what we've shared so far in an assembly which um, I delivered for the sixth form and Mr Irwin delivered for the rest of the school, that was on the first day back on the 8th of March, um, was this slide. And there's been very little change from this, apart from the fact that we're now not 10 weeks away, it's about eight and a bit. Um, what we are suggesting here is that results days are going to be on the 10th and the 12th of August. That's still the case. That there's going to be a quality assurance process, and we'll talk about that in the meeting in the assembly now, and that we're going to be basing your evidence over the last two years, and that's still the case now. We're also going to talk about the appeals process. So all of that is still the same, but we're now going to give you the, the promised detail. So this is what's being produced by one of the exam boards. This is from the OCR exam board. And the key piece of information here, in addition to the dates of the results days, the 10th and the 12th, 10th for level three, um, 12th for level two GCSE, is the 18th of June. And this date also appears on this graphic from the um, Pearson VTEC exam board, the 18th of June. So the exam boards have now set a date when all the tag evidence must be submitted to them. So everything we're going to talk about in that assembly, we'll talk about that. OK. We've also got this infographic from uh, BTEC particularly, this is from Pearson again, but for the BTEC, and this talks about here about Q tags. So I just want to say a few things about that. A Q tag is a qualification tag, qualification teacher assessed grade, and that refers to the entire qualification. So what your teachers will not need to do for BTEC and vocational courses is grade you on every individual unit. They need to come up with an overall grade just as your GCSE and A-level teachers are doing. OK, so that's a change to what was originally expected for BTEC courses, Q tags. This is the, the promised timeline. The first stage of this has already been completed, which was the teachers deciding how they're going to be grading you. Um, we're recording this on Wednesday evening, but um, by Thursday uh, morning when you hear this, the data will be ready to go up onto the school website. And we're going to be publishing a more than 50 page document explaining how in every single subject your teacher assessed grades are going to be generated. So you, you and your parents know exactly how you're going to be graded this year. From that point onwards, you'll be doing additional assessments after Easter, some homework, some coursework, some additional activities, maybe in practical subjects, all gathering additional evidence. And the word additional is in bold in um, block capitals there because a lot of the evidence has already been captured. OK, we're not going to gather things that we don't need to gather. If we've already got the evidence, that will be fine. We may provide some recent opportunities, as we'll mention in a moment, but it's about additional evidence so we can give you the best grades possible. Following that process from Friday the 14th of May, the teachers will have a week where they need to get their grades in for every student they teach. That needs to be done by the end of school on that Friday, the 21st of May. And then the final week of the next half term, will be for the heads of faculty, people with responsibilities within subject areas and the leadership team links to do a internal quality assurance process to make sure that all of the grades given are fair and accurate. After May half term, there will be our quality assurance panel. Last year we had a CAD panel, this year we're going to have a TAG panel and that will provide additional checks and we'll explain that as we go through this assembly. On results days, there will be an appeals process and we'll also mention that this morning. So in terms of what evidence we're going to be gathering, we've already said we're going to publish the evidence prior to the Easter break. That will be later today. But the guidance from our full says centre should make sure students are aware. And I know some teachers have already been indicating that in lessons, but we're going to put out a document so that every subject has done the same. It also says that subjects will need to be flexible, where some students have missed particular assessments through no fault of their own. And we believe that all of our faculties have considered that in their, their tag evidence documents. The work can be from any point during the course of study. So these are two year courses. If you're on a one year AS course or one year BTEC in year 12, and obviously it's one year of study, but um, we can gather stuff that you captured 
at the beginning of year 10 or beginning of year 12 on a two year A level. Clearly, your faculties may want to look at more recent evidence because that may be where you are now and give that more weighting than evidence captured earlier on the course, but they can look back. The key point is it must re represent your own work. And so work completed during lockdown or work you're doing at home, the uh, teachers need to guard against any inappropriate levels of support. And the guidance says that may be from parents or from external private tutors. So we need to be guarding that your evidence is authentic. OK, so just a reminder though, if you do something at home and it's not typical of what would normally be done, the teachers may ask to see more evidence about that. In terms of what we're gathering, it has to be consistent across all classes. So what the teachers are producing will be in line with their faculty plan. It won't be the case that if you're in one teacher's class, you will do something different than in another teacher's class. It will be entirely consistent. And some of the things they will be using, okay, and you'll see this on the document when you get to read it later today. We'll also send it out via email to your parents. Is assessments provided by the exam board. Okay, and that may be PPEs, it may not be. Non-examination assessments, so that's also known as coursework. And that doesn't have to be entirely completed this year. OK, the exam board understand due to COVID, there may be gaps in some of that coursework. Substantial class or homework. So maybe not you know, five multiple choice questions, but a substantial essay style question clearly could be used. And in practical subjects such as performing arts, PE, MFL, um, in terms of oral assessments, food, uh, they will be looking at your um, performance in terms of practical activities and speaking assessments. All of that information, I've already said a number of times, is going to be published later today. Just some key principles. Hopefully um, none of this will be seen to be unfair. We're not going to be giving you papers you've sat before. The assessments you'll be given uh, will be obviously unseen, but there won't be any surprises. You will know when you're being assessed, what you're being assessed on, the syllabus content, OK, but not necessarily the specific questions. You may know you have a longer mark question on a particular theme, but we won't give you the question word for word. That's that's about being fair and making sure that exams have what we call integrity. The guidance has said that exams this year should not be any easier or any harder than they normally would be, but they need to be fair. And we do need to judge the typicality of what you produce. So what we can't have is one maybe fluke outcome or one particularly bad outcome affecting the overall grade. So if your profile at A level is C, 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 A and an E, overall that's going to be a, a C grade. The A and the E may not be representative of the overall picture. Back at GCSC, if you're typically performing lots of grade fours and fives, that is the typical grade. If there's a, a grade two in there, then that isn't typical of your overall outcome. So let's look at some examples. These have been provided by different subject areas. I'm um, starting with something I produce. This is for my A, a level economics class. Here we can see that 50% of the weighting is going to be based upon uh, pre public exams, what sometimes are called mocks. We call them PPEs in school. So I've published here the two dates in April when I'm going to be sitting a paper two and a paper three PPE. We did a paper one in December, but we're going to be doing another opportunity to improve upon that in April, and we will take the best results there. We've also, because I'm a hard taskmaster, set 20 homework essays over the course of the two years, and all of those are in the students' blue trays in my classroom, which could be used as part of the evidence. I'm going to be looking at the work over the course of that you know, whole course. I'm also going to consider um, contributions to class discussions, debates and so on. That I can write a witness statement for, and that will represent 10%. So that's where the 100% comes from. But it's very clear to the students in my class and to anybody else looking at that, how the grade's going to be um, I'm sure year 11 wants to know how we're going to be assessed in English. So here is, here's the English um, tag evidence pro forma provided by Miss Willoughby and English team. You'll see it's not based just on a couple of exams in the hall as it normally would be. This is a much fairer process with smaller percentages given to more evidence over the course. OK, so some going back to December last year. There's going to be a task set during the Easter holidays. There's going to be some in-class assessments in April. Some attitude learning, classwork, ethic is still, effort, still going to be considered. And again, this key point about opportunities for missed assessments, in this case during Unit 6 after school on a Monday. OK, it does point out the assessments delivered in capture will be different for those delivered in class. That's all about fairness again, to make sure that the students who've obviously missed an assessment are still given the opportunity to do it.
but it will still be a fair test because it won't be one that everybody else has already done. Can I just ask there, Mr Abbott, you've said on that slide that some of the assessments will be assessed anonymously. What does that mean? Oh, sorry, I missed that, Miss, but very important. Thanks for uh, reminding us of that. Yeah, that means that the students will put their candidate number on rather than their name. We're very conscious in trying to reduce any sort of bias or favouritism in this process. So rather than there be an accusation of teachers giving a, a preferential treatment to a student who they may have, a, um, have had a good relationship or a better relationship with over the course of a period of time, and maybe somebody who they've had a clash with on a particular incident, what we're going to say here is it's purely based on candidate numbers. OK, that's a very fair process and we'll avoid any accusations of bias. OK, we, we know our teachers have integrity and they'll do things properly anyway. But again, this is just another layer of protection we'll put in place here. This is example for a BTEC course. This is the Year 13 Travel and Tourism course. There's no exams on this particular course. It's all done via coursework. Half the course was done last year and is assessed through the CAG process. So that carries forward. And the other half of the course is based on coursework completed this year. And that's in line with the assignment plans that have already been put in place. So the students there will expect that style of assessment, one sip of the course for each module. And again, there's no requirement. Everything is 100% finished. But as the students were working throughout lockdown, I expect most of that work will be completed by the end of the course. And in a level two vocational example from iMedia, they did the January exam because it was one of the exams that was allowed to go ahead during the lockdown. So clearly those results that can be considered. But if anybody missed it because maybe they were isolating or whatever reason, they're going to be doing another pre public exam and a, a further recent opportunity. So this is very, very fair here. They've also done a, a pre public exam in December prior to the real exam, and they've got lots of coursework sat in during year 11, and that's still going to be ongoing with a deadline here coming up this week. And um, some work, obviously, that's going to be completed in class as well. So again, not just one assessment here, lots of different opportunities to gather yeah, evidence towards their teacher assessed grades. Just in terms of the quality assurance, we've mentioned some of the things we're going to be doing to keep the system fair. Once the teachers have produced their evidence and it's been scrutinised by the heads of faculty and by the leadership team links, it will then go to this internal panel. So last year, this panel consisted of Mr Irwin as head of centre, the principal, uh, myself and Mr Hussain, who uh, line manage, we're called Raising Standards Leaders, for post 16 and for key stage four for year 11 and the exams officer and we spent many hours last year in meetings scrutinizing all of the CAG grades this year we're also inviting in Miss Harvey as head of year 11 and Mr Wilson as the school SENCO special ed educational needs coordinator and an independent person potentially a school governor who will also act as another check on our processes to make sure this process is very very fair and what we will do is we will address any concerns or queries we have with the data to the head of faculty of leadership team link and ensure that all arrangements that should have been put in place have been so mr wilson will challenge us to make sure that any access arrangements or reasonable adjustments have been applied if a student is due to get 25 percent extra time were they given that time if somebody did their exams on a word processor were they allowed the opportunity did they have their reader or scribe so mr wilson the exams officer will make sure all of those special access arrangements have been put in place and all of the time we're going to be guarding against what we call unconscious bias or the exam board are calling unconscious effects on objectivity and we'll make sure we look at all the data to make sure that there's not been under prediction or over prediction by different groups or individual students so a big focus here on making sure things are fair and objective that data has to go to the exam board by the latest the 18th of june as i've already said if data is completed earlier than that, the exams officer will, will key that in and get back to the exam boards earlier. But before it goes off, two teachers, which would normally be the head of faculty and somebody else with responsibility or an experienced teacher within that subject, they will sign it off to say all the tags submitted are accurate and fair. If there's only one teacher in the faculty, then Mr Irwin will also act as the second sign off. We've got a check here in case any teacher has a personal interest in the candidate. Maybe they've got a relative within the school. Mr Irwin will obviously do a check on that as well to make sure somebody else signs off that data. There's two members of staff who will submit it, so there's not going to be just one person pressing the button. We have two members of staff who check and double check to make sure the grades going off are correct. And Mr Irwin has to sign off every single tag grade generated to make sure they're correct. And if he's not able to do so, then Mr Wales will step into his place. So again, lots of layers of checks to make sure the grades are correct. 
Now, if you're still not happy, there will be an appeals process and that will apply on results day uh, from that point forward. We're not allowed to tell you your actual tag grade until results day. OK, because there are various checks and stages that have to go through. So the grade that the teacher submits may be moderated by our various quality assurance panels. So it's important that the teacher does not reveal the grade until results day. There's also an examination board stage that takes place in the end of June, beginning of July, where the exam board also moderates grades. But it's not going to be based on any formulas this year. It is going to be based on the grades that the teachers submit. But if you're not happy, you can ask the exams officer to check the grade that you're being given is the grade that was generated by your teacher. And that will be a, a straightforward check to make sure there's been no admin errors. Nobody's like pressed the wrong button on the computer when they were generating those, those tags. Provided that the grade was correct, you can ask for an internal appeal of your tag evidence. And that will require me to look at the evidence the teachers have provided. And I will go through any PPEs, any homework. I'll look at the portfolio of evidence and make sure the grades that have been generated there match the grade that was put in. OK, so that is a very transparent process. If you are taught by me, one of my um, A-level or GCSE students, then somebody else would clearly do that role because we need to make sure it's very, very fair. We can't have people accusing me of you know, giving favouritism to my own students. That's why somebody else would obviously take on that role. And the third stage, if you still aren't happy with the grades that Ken Stimson have given you, is to appeal directly to the exam board. So that would involve Mrs Leach, our exams officer, submitting uh, your appeal and providing the evidence on which we've based you. So that includes PPEs, coursework, you know, witness statements, all of that evidence will be sent to the exam board and they will then make sure that the grade that we've given you reflects an appropriate exercise of academic judgment. Basically, it's a fair grade based upon all the evidence. And they'll also check our processes. You know, did we follow all the processes I'm talking about, talking about in this assembly? So over to some questions now. OK, so I can have a bit of a rest and a, a drink of tea. Over to you, Miss Harvey. So you've given us a lot of really important information there, and obviously these slides, this video will go out to students as well so that they can recap any that they want to. But I do think they might still have some questions. And this is the first one. Why do they still need to do more work? OK, so all of these questions, Miss Harvey, have come from tutor groups or from tutors, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. OK, so some students are asking why we do we need to do some more work? OK, well, this is the answer because nothing has yet been decided. OK, it is still all still to play for a phrase that Mr Irwin's used a number of times already. If you work hard and generate further evidence which will support giving you a higher grade, we can certainly raise your grades from where we reported in February. So I've been sharing the February reports with people I've been interviewing for post 16 interviews, but I've been telling them these are not your tags and that is absolutely the honest truth. If you work hard, if you give us better evidence and prove that you're working at the next grade up or even several grades up, we can still give you a higher tag. That's why you need to keep working. Keep working up to the final day. So one, particularly for BTEC here, I think. So do I need to finish my coursework? So I'm a, a post 16 or a year 11 student. Do I need to finish my coursework, sir? Uh, very hard to answer that one because the answer is yes and no. Um, if you completed work in year 10 or if you're a two year BTEC student and did work in year 12, because the school closed in March, about a year ago from where we are now, students didn't return to complete that work until in, in terms of July. So there is an expectation that some of that work wouldn't have been finished and the exam boards don't expect you to go back and complete work that you've been given a CAG for. So the answer to that bit is no. But work you're working on now, there is an expectation you will continue working on. But if there's not enough time when we submit these, these um, tags towards the end of May, then there's no expectation it has to be finished. So I suppose the simple message is keep working until the deadline set by your teacher. OK, because if you stop working now, if you down tools, that could clearly impact upon your tag. For year 12 students, though, it is quite possible you're going to be working right up until the end of the school year in, in the middle of July, because the work you're doing in year 12 may actually impact upon the work you're doing in year 13. You'll be gaining those important skills you'll need next year. So I expect teachers will want you to keep working on that work until the end of the year. OK, Miss Harvey, what's next? What date can I work up to in order to affect my grade? So I'm really keen. I want to do the best I possibly can. When's the last date that I can submit anything? OK, well, on the timeline, we mentioned Friday the 14th of May. And I think that's the date that we're going to have to say is the absolute cutoff point, because after that date, the teachers need to be able to submit the grades 
to the um, heads of faculty so it can then go through that important moderation process. So if they give one student a, a week extension, they're going to have to give that same opportunity to everybody else in the year group because we have to be entirely fair by this process. So the student deadline will be the 14th of May. That's five weeks after return at Easter. So still plenty of time, but please, please, please don't leave it until that day and then say, oh, I'd like to give you five more essays to mark because by that stage it could be too late. OK, the teachers will mark anything given to them on that day. But after that date, if you try and hand in work, it may not be considered for your tags. So I think that's definitely a date for the diary and one that students need to be entered into their own calendars, isn't it? Yeah, they certainly shouldn't see June the 18th as their final date because by that stage the grades have to be with the exam boards. OK, another important question. So I know, for instance, some students missed their PPEs back in November, December time. How are students, how are teachers going to take into account missed work and incomplete courses? So two parts to the question there. Yeah, I also know when I was starting the January exam, some of the students had to isolate during January. Obviously, there was nothing they could do about that, but that meant they didn't get a January result. What we're going to do there is make sure that we provide additional assessment opportunities. So from the English uh, tag exemplar that we showed earlier in this assembly, they're going to be having these after school opportunities for additional assessments to take place. And we're going to be doing that in other subjects as well. There is no expectation that courses will be finished. We understand that obviously there's been lots of lost learning time and students will only be assessed on work they've studied. This year, the teachers obviously are, are choosing the papers. They're going to put out their assessments. So they'll make sure that there's only questions on there students are prepared for. There's going to be no banana skins or slip ups here. Students will be assessed on work that they are ready to do. And the resits is important. If you've missed an opportunity, there will be a resit where necessary. Excellent. OK, so normally when we have uh, pre-public examinations, we take these assessments in the hall. Is that going to be the case this time around? Um, in most cases, not. OK, some may be. It may be that some faculty decide it's going to be important. Uh, I know some of my students have actually asked to do their exam in an examination venue in a hall or somewhere like that because they feel it will actually make them take it more seriously. But there's not a requirement to do that. Most exams, I suspect, will be in classrooms and certainly during lesson times. What we're not going to do is collapse the timetable for a two week mock exam period and PPE period. Exams will be broken down into 45 minute chunks that can be sat during lesson time. That does mean though, that students with access arrangements or special considerations, so somebody who maybe does their exam on a computer or somebody who has a reader or a scribe or somebody who has 25 percent extra time, those students may be taken out of their lessons to do their exams in a different room. But that's normally the case. Those students don't normally go into the assembly hall anyway. But again, it will all be fair to make sure students have the time to do the exams um, you know, over the next few weeks. Excellent. OK, so talking about making things fair, I think we've kind of covered this already, but can you just summarise for us, please, what steps will be taken to make sure that the tax process is fair? Yeah, I've lost count of the number of times I've used the word fair, so hopefully people can see that we've put lots of checks and balances in. But just as a summary, um, we're going to have various quality assurance processes. So that will be the check by the head of faculty where they will look at all of the different teachers in their faculty to make sure they're being consistent and they'll be supported by their leadership team link who will make sure they help them in, in doing that check. And then the CAG panel with the external advisor on that panel as well, making sure that they work with us with liaison with other schools. We're going to be lots of checks to make sure that we've scrutinised our data. But some other things that I know from the, the tag evidence faculties are considering, making sure that the papers are marked anonymously. So what students write their candidate number on them rather than their name. That removes any sort of accusations of bias or favouritism. Some departments are going to get different teachers to mark different sections. So no one teacher will mark a whole paper. Again, that's about making sure the process is fair. Uh, their marking will be moderated. So if a teacher's obviously marked a sample of scripts, somebody else would mark maybe five or six of those scripts to make sure that the standard is right and accurate across different teachers. And where we've got single teacher departments, we will liaise with other schools as well and make sure that somebody else from another school, another subject expert has had a look at the, the standard of marking. So again, lots of checks and balances to make sure the process is as fair as possibly can be. And of course, there is still the appeals process. So if anybody isn't happy about the process, they can also make an appeal. Oh, OK, we're prepared to the next question, Miss. Absolutely. OK, so Sorry. what would the appeal process be? Stage one is to check by the exams officer. Stage two, the internal review and stage three, the exam board review. So various stages you can go through if you're still not happy. 
I should point out as well, there are some suggestions there's going to be an autumn exam series this year, just as there was last year. So if you're still not happy with the grade you're given through the tag process, you'll have the chance to actually do the exam. Uh, they're consulting on that at the moment. They haven't finalised that yet, but that's what they did this year with exams in November. And we believe that may be the case as well. So if you're still not happy after an appeal, you'd have the chance to do the exam in, in the autumn series. That's very reassuring, sir. So, million dollar question here. When can students leave the school? Um, we are not entirely sure on that one. OK, uh, the government has not specified a legal date. Um, schools think we need to make the use of the time we have. A little bit of an echo there, Miss. Can you hear that as well? No, not on my end, sir. Okay. Hopefully not recording. Hopefully it's not. We'll continue anyway. For year 11 and 13, you are likely to be finished by May half term. OK, I think it's unlikely the government will require you to come back after that point. But if you are joining our sixth form, we've already published that the uh, post-16 induction will be Monday the 5th to Wednesday the 7th of July. And that's the compulsory start of your post-16 courses. So certainly don't plan anything during that week because we'll need you back in school. And year 12 students, you, as always, you will continue with your studies until the end of term. So what we typically would do is once the AS exams have taken place, we would start the A-level teaching and we would expect to do that this year as well. So once we've generated the tags, uh, you would start learning the next year's course content. And that also applies to vocational students, BTECs and so on with your second year modules. So year 12 will come back and continue as normal. Year 11 and 13 may very likely leave at May half term, unless the government tell us otherwise, but that is obviously subject to government advice. OK, so this is an important question then. So you've just told us that year 11 and year 13 will likely be finishing at May half term, but we've also got the date prior to that when the tags work needs to be completed, the 14th of May. What will they be doing between those two times? What we're not going to do is mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, tag evidence is clearly that any tag is generated. So at that point, uh, we will do further enrichment activities to support their transition to the next stage of our education. Okay, so it'll be useful work, but it won't be directly relevant to the tags at that stage. Year 12, though, we'll get, move on to year 13 courses, I've already said. Now, I think this might be a question for me, sir. Is unit six for everyone? So uh, we know unit six is year 11 students. Uh, I, if you've got I have no idea here, Miss, so I'm going to have to have this one. I have no idea what's happening with Unit 6. Let me bring up your slide. Lovely. So it's another yes and no one. So hopefully all of the Year 11 students will have seen this. It has been emailed home to parents and it's been sent out to tutors. So you can see it's a yes and no, because if you look at the bottom of the table, English and science are by invitation only. But all of those other option subjects are offering sessions that are open to all of their students. So there's quite a variety there all on the Monday or the Thursday. And I think really it's important that you do take every effort to attend those. And whilst we're on that subject, there are also some Easter revision sessions that you may want to look at. If you're not sure when they are, again, ask your tutor or come and see me. OK, thank you for that, Miss. That's certainly news to me because I didn't know anything about Unit 6. OK, I know a bit more about this, though. Will there be a prom or a post-16 leavers this year? Normally, that's one of my roles is prom organiser. Clearly, last year's prom had to be cancelled. Um, this year, we have a roadmap. OK, so that's the government's roadmap. We're still in step one at the moment. OK, we've got the rule of six and the outdoor meetings bit happening soon. Stage two is when uh, non-essential retail happens. And step three is when uh, pubs and restaurants and so on can open. What we'll be interested in is step four, because that's large events and a prom or a year 13 you know, Lieber's Ball, this would be a large scale event. So at the moment, these are a big no-no. Supposedly, with all legal limits on social contact going on June the 21st, it may be possible to have such an event. Okay, This is further from the .gov website. We hope to reopen remaining premises, including nightclubs and Easter restrictions on large events and performances that apply in step three. So historically, some year 13s have gone on to nightclubs at the end of their school year. That may be able to happen you know, after the 21st of June. But there's lots of if, buts and maybes here because we haven't even got to step 1B and we're talking about step 4. So if the lockdown um, continues to, the, the roadmap continues to go as planned, it may be that we can have those events at the end of the year. July the 7th is still reserved with the Marriott Hotel. 
Okay, so we still have a booking in the diary. And who's that for, sir? That what are you going for? That is for the uh, year 11 prom. Okay, so we Excellent. used to, uh, the Marriott Hotel, that's a long hold tradition. And that date is still in the diary. I already published that to year, year 11 much earlier in the year uh, when we thought we would be able to go ahead before the new lockdown. We still might be able to. But what we will do is we'll see what happens with the next stages of the roadmap. And if it looks like we're going to get to step four without any further delays, then I think we'll convene a, a prom committee and a year 13 leavers committee to start making some concrete plans. But more details to follow. Certainly don't go out buying any expensive prom dresses or booking limos at this stage because I wouldn't want anybody losing any money. But if we can, we will. And I think, Miss Harvey, if we can't do events at you know, uh, professional venues, we'll try and organise things in school that we can do within our constraints. That would be brilliant. And I know we've got lots of Year 11 students who are very interested in being involved in, in organising those events too. OK, so I think we will, we will pledge that something will happen at the end of the year. Ideally, it will be at a professional venue, but we will do something in school if we can't do that. So that's, I think, the best we can start at this stage. Brilliant. Really good to hear. Thank you, sir. OK, well, that's a, so, a blank slide. So I'm assuming that is the, the last question then. I think it's, we're done. Absolutely. So I think the last thing just to say is that if any students do still have any questions that we haven't yet answered, please do let us know. Come and see us. If there's a few, we can always do another video, can't we, sir? Oh, we can, or we can maybe try a live assembly that this one's been recorded for them. We obviously go for your tutors in the first instance. Your tutors may be able to answer them, but if not, obviously get them fed back up to us and we will give you the answers that you seek, provided we know them, because we have been very open this afternoon or this morning in your assembly that there, um, there are some things we still don't know the answers to, but we will tell you what we know. OK. OK, well, say goodbye then. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot, everybody. Bye bye.